welcome back to NeuroSciIQ, the best place on YouTube to increase your neuroscience IQ. It's been a while since I've come to you on the channel with a new video. I guess you could say I've been procrastinating a little bit. And today's topic is actually procrastination. So if you want to learn a little bit about the neuroscience of why you procrastinate, sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. Procrastination has been around as long as we have. You think you're the only one who does it? Well, it turns out ancient Greek philosophers procrastinated as well. In fact, in Protagoras, Plato wrote to Socrates, if one judges an action to be the best, one would do anything but this action. The Greeks called this akrasia. Akrasia means weakness of will, and we've all experienced it. We know we have to do something, we know it's the best thing we should be spending our time on, but we don't. Procrastination comes from the Italian word pro, meaning forward, before, and crastanias, meaning till the next day. So putting something forward to the next day. So we all procrastinate, but what's going on in our heads and why do we do it? In the brain, we have two main systems involved with procrastination. We've got the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. The limbic system is the paleomammalian brain. Paleo meaning ancient. So this is one of the earliest parts that formed in our brain during evolution. And so the limbic system, we commonly associate it with emotion and things like the flight or fight response and your rest and digest response. So automatic responses to things. Our PFC or prefrontal cortex on the other hand is newer, it's more developed and it's something that's unique in humans. This is responsible for our characteristics, our self-control, our planning and being thoughtful about actions and controlling them consciously. Now the limbic system and the PFC are interconnected in that sometimes the PFC controls our impulses. We have impulses every day, but we can decide what we want to do and what we don't want to do. We're not just a victim to the stimuli in our environment. That being said, even though the PFC can exert control over the limbic system, sometimes the limbic system wins out and the PFC doesn't suppress our impulses. And this is something that is easier to do. It's easier to just react to reward and immediate stimuli than to delay gratification. It's easier to act on the spot and get the most rewarding action. It's hard to control our impulses because the limbic system rewards us with rushes of dopamine when we do something that we like or something that is rewarding. So it's easier to respond to immediate gratification rather than delaying gratification. So when you want to sit down and watch Netflix, you might receive a flood of dopamine. You feel happy that you're taking a break, you feel happy that you're watching one of your favorite shows, but if you sit down and study, you're not going to feel the reward until the end when you learn the material or you do well on a test. So what about the people that say, I perform better under pressure? Well, studies have shown that this is probably not true. Even though the pressure might kick you into second gear and get you started on a project, it turns out that when you're under pressure, you do worse. In fact, we've talked about it before on the channel, but the yerkes dodson Law looks at a curve of stress. And there is a period of optimal arousal where you will perform your best, but there's also points where you're too stressed to do well, and there's also points where you might be too relaxed to do well. So maybe you have a project due three months from now. Well, the chances are you're not stressed up enough about it to worry about it that much, so you won't do too well on it. But 
in a couple of weeks, you might get involved in the project, you might get started on it, and it would be your optimal point of arousal. But if you wait two days before the project's due, you're going to be too stressed to do it well. So, even though it's hard, try to get your prefrontal cortex to win out over your limbic system so that you can put your best foot forward in anything you're doing. And some tips for procrastination include do the worst thing first. It'll feel really rewarding once you get it out of the way. Chunk things or break down larger items into smaller items. Set a 10 minute timer and work as much as you can in the 10 minutes. Usually once you get the ball rolling, it's easier to keep it going. And also, working in public tends to make people perform better as well. There have been studies done in gyms, for instance, where people work out or push themselves harder when there are other people watching. So, the same would go with studying. Also, give yourself a reward. If you finish something, make sure you don't just keep beating yourself up and working day after day after day. You have to reward yourself for your hard work so you don't burn out. Speaking of burnout, COVID has been a big stressor for everyone. It has caused a mental health crisis, anxiety, depression, um, and changes in mood all around the world. And in fact, we found that in the time of COVID, people are more likely to procrastinate because of these emotional triggers. Again, remember we said the limbic system is controlling emotion. We're also more likely to procrastinate when we don't have a schedule. Usually we create powerful associations with different stimuli. For instance, when you're at school, the associations with the school environment will prep you for learning. Whereas when you're at home, your association with a comfy couch and a TV would prepare you to relax. But during COVID when everybody was working home, we didn't have these two separate places to help us use associations to guide us to what we should do. So that helped um, augment procrastination during that time. So that is the gist of procrastination, the limbic system versus the prefrontal cortex, which will win out for you. If you have any questions about today's video, leave your comments down below. We'll try our best to get back to you. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on NeuroPsyQ. Thanks for watching.